Hello there, and welcome back to another video of mesh education with, uh, with Wolf Dynamic, but also meshing with OpenFun. So this time we're going to talk about overset meshes, the latest development. Okay, it has been a long time since we pr prepare a video in overset meshes for OpenFun. So this will be a quick introduction to show you the develop developments and uh, and a few uh, small introduction. We are working in a, a, in a entire new video tutorial, no serious video tutorials, just to show you uh, with more details and to compare with OpenFone. So the first thing that I would like to talk about is just to remind you what is overset meshes. Basically, overset meshes it just consists in generating a set of meshes, a group of meshes, and then we put it together. Okay. It doesn't matter. The type of mesh can be a structure or a structure. Okay. The only thing is that they need to be generated independently and then you put everything together. So the algorithm, the method, what it will do is that when you put everything together, you merge meshes, it's going to compute a hole, what is called a chimera hole, then it's going to raise on cells and then it's going to create an interpolation fringe. And in this fringe or layer, you're going to interpolate the solution. So at this point in step three, you can see that it's a valid mesh, but probably this interpolation region is too close to the walls. And if you have some strong gradients that might give you problems. So there is a extra step that you optimize you now that interpolation. Uh, region. So this is one of the developments in OpenFun, okay, the latest developments. And I think it's where OpenFun is a little bit lagging behind some other tools such as Fluent, XTRCCN, and some other por por uh, open source tools, but it is working. So that is in the general uh, guidelines now, the over. Uh, the overall view, but then what it makes over set meshes of very handy is the ability to deal with moving bodies. So the previous case is just to show you the general assembly for static mesh, which is not interesting. And honestly, I don't recommend you to use over mesh, uh, overset meshes for static bodies since it gets interesting when the body is moving. And as you can see here, you have the body and each time step now when the body changes position and it is the form, you just need to recompute this interpolation region and this will let you uh <clears throat> will le uh, will let you work with very large displacements since that were impossible or very difficult using uh single block methods now you can do it and this is a big advantage so two things that i would like to stress do not use overset meshes uh with the static, uh, with the static uh, simulations that since when are, they're not moving, it's not do not use, but it's not recommended because uh, overset meshes requires a complete new way of thinking. So you might overcomplicate things. So just use it when you need it. And just to, 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 to let you know that uh, I don't recall the last time that I used overset meshes, honestly. I use it, but not very often. And I only use it when I really need it, when I have those really difficult cases that since I'm moving or for whatever reason, I need to resolve for this kind of methodology. So be careful about that. That being said, also would like to talk a little bit of the origins because this method, I have been talking to a few people and I think people is thinking now oh, the, the the newcomers that this is a new method. The method is really old, okay? Its origins are, let's say, when CFD was war, born, you know, in the late 70s, early 80s, and it was created as a necess necessity because in the early uh, years of CFD, generating meshes, everything was a structure. It was really tricky. So working with overset, uh, overset meshes was very, was very intuitive to do this, this method to, to deal with the problem. So here we have the workflow. So as you can see, uh, the evolution, as you can see, is very old. And then uh, at the beginning, it's just fix bodies just to, to, to deal with the, with, with the burden of, uh, of the structure measure generated. But then later as computer, computer resources were evolving, new methods, new algorithm, it was, uh, immediately identified that it's a really handy method to deal with moving bodies. As of today, I have to say that most of the most uh, most of the the the, the uh, open source and commercial software they 
do have this capability now to do to generate overset meshes. It's a not new uh, methodology, as I mentioned, and there's a lot, you know, in <clears throat> in the in the community in the internet. And just to mention that you have this overset comp uh, composite grids. Uh, Symposium. So there, there, are, there, it has many methods. No, I call it overset meshes. Some people call it a uh, chimera meshes, and then you have these more technical overset composite grids. And it's very old. You know, the first edition was in '92, and then the last edition was in 2022. I don't recall. I, I, I don't know where would be the next one, but you can check the the website. So if you go here, you will see a lot of information. So I strongly recommend it. I recommend you to to look at it. So as of today is 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 used like, as I mentioned is is every single piece of software. No, it has a, an implementation. There are many ways to implement it, okay? So I'm going to talk about the, in this video the flavor that you have in 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 open front. But it's mainly used to deal with moving bodies. Okay, that is very important. Just use it when you have moving bodies and you are sure that you can tackle that Problem using traditional methods, and remember, it requires a completely new way of thinking. So another here in this slide, just to show you a few uh, additional libraries and sol solvers. So the only one is not open for So here you have kind of an incomplete list. Now you have many solvers here in the commercial size. You have this one. If I would recall, probably Metacom CFD plus plus was the first commercial one to introduce our set meshes, and then the all the others were, were follow. Uh, as in, uh, ANSYS Fluent is fantastic. That is the one I use from the commercial point of view. And I'm going to compare OpenFone and Fluent, and I'm just going to show you what is lacking in OpenFone that you can find in, in Fluent, but also in any other uh, commercial software. So that is the subject of some additional videos. Also, you, we have here some libraries just to assemble the overset meshes. So this is not, these are solvers here. You have the library and you can couple this library with different solvers. And then in OpenFund, there is not a single uh, sol uh, solver. There are many flavors, as you see here. Uh, it was in OpenFund was introduced in, in this version in 2019, and it works, okay? So it has been evolved um, last year. It was a really good addition uh, improvement. That, that is the one I want to show you. So just to show you a few examples, images. So here you have the references, but you can get the idea. For instance, you have the space shuttle here. It can be a really tricky geometry mesh to generate if you are using structure meshes. Okay, so this is the idea. Now at the beginning, this was the concept that very complicated geometries. Uh, generate this single block is almost impossible. So you just split everything in different patches and then you, you assemble everything together. And then also you can do it with moving bodies. So here you have another example. But now, okay, just to show you to illustrate it here. But now let's talk about the specific in, in, in OpenFone. So basically to generate overset meshes in OpenFone. And I have to say that these basic steps are common for any CFD solver. Okay, so then there will be a small uh, differences, but pretty much is the same. So you need to generate the component meshes and merge them together. So you can use any method, it can be structure and structure, it doesn't matter, it is up to you. Then you need to define the overset patches or boundary conditions. So step one and two is done by the user, that is your manual intervention. And you start to see here that it requires, now there is some burden behind this. Then you need to assign zones, okay? As you can imagine, you have different bodies, so you need to assign, let's call it priorities, which doesn't work very well in OpenFone, but they're getting there. Again, this is done for, for, by the user. And then the final step is just compute the interpolation stencils and assign cell type, okay? So this is done by the overset solver, okay? The overset implementation. We'll, de we'll deal with this. And basically what is happening here is that the solver or the library that is computing this overset mesh assembly is going to, to, to assign to the cells different different numbers or types. So it can be a whole, can be an interpolation cell, a calculated cell, and so on. So that depends on the implementation. They call it in different ways and they have different different cell types. Okay, so Basically, let, let, let's take a look at this simple example. Okay, this is the imagine that is the classical cylinder case. You have the cylinder here, but look at that. It split everything in different meshes. So we have a background mesh 
okay remember it can be any kind of, of mesh so we have the background mesh then we have a refinement region here so you know that you have the wake here so you create this region here and then you have the the mesh around the, the cylinder so basically you put everything together you have this addition and after you merge everything you're going to put that mesh in a single folder or working directory you now talking in open phone uh, jargon and here's where you are going to compute you now to run your simulation so you can generate you now you have folder one cylinder folder two refinement sums then you merge these two meshes and then you put everything together in a folder that you can call all or whatever is up to you and by doing this merge operations you now you are assembling this set then your so this is this is a step one or you you, comp you generate the independent component mesh then in step two you define the overset patches okay so depending of the complexity of your mesh assembly okay this can be a little bit tricky order is important there is some also some rules in open phone and any other cfd solver will have its own rules so be careful about that so here in this case we have this overset and this overset patch or boundary and basically what is happening here when the solution arrive here you pass to the other level and vice versa and you keep computing okay and you have here different zones okay so this is the priority level okay also you assign this one so in open phone usually sun zero would be the background mesh the largest mesh the mesh that is going to take all the information and then you assign from there different levels i have to mention that usually probably you have seen no overset meshes only with two meshes no like the background mesh and something around the body but the, the it can be very complex okay the the whole assembly so look at that this is very simple and in this case that is a flow around the cd in there but by having just three uh different component meshes things can get a very tricky so and then the final step uh it is just compute this tens this stencil interpolation stencils and so type this is done by the solver so depending on the solver that you are using there will be different names so in the cases for open phone you have whole interpolator and calculate so calculate you compute the solution whole you raise those cells from your domain you are not con not going to compute the solution there kind of masking and then interpolate it you interpolate the solution there there is another type here that is not shown but it's just seeing when you have an invalid mesh which is orphan cells orphan cells are cells from where you cannot get any solution so that can create problems doesn't mean that you cannot run you can run but you're going to have some problems so basically this is what is happening here now the interpolation so look at that very simple example just three component meshes since it would be a little bit tricky but see that what we have here is that in different uh component meshes you have different interpolation regions so see that the walls always the walls are going to cut a hole in your whole assembly and see here that this wall is cutting a hole here and the yellow one also is cutting a hole in the other mesh and basically this is what you do you cut the hole and then you have the other region where you're interpolate the problem with the open phone is that look at here that this this interpolation region is very close to the wall and there usually you have a strong gradients and that gradients and that can create problems so that used to be a problem then in the in version 22 uh no yeah 20 22 12 they introduced uh a new flag no keyword to to take care of that that it works well but it can be better and that is what i want to show you here and basically this is when overset meshes becomes really powerful now dealing with bodies with large displacement no simulation with large displacement but not only a single body multiple bodies because still you can do this using some other techniques but look at that here since it starts to get tricky and this is the power of overset mesh so remember only use it when you really need to use it because there is an overhead behind the, your simulations are going to be slower and also remember and i always stress this when it requires a completely way a completely new way of thinking when you generate the meshes so let me skip here a little bit just the order and so on and 20 here you have the general steps the four first steps are very general any solver will will we follow these steps and then you will have some other extra step that here will be specific for open for now that compute the stencils or type uh, interpolation solution and so on okay so this is the general overflow and now let's 
take a look at a few applications just to show you here the solution okay and different measures so here we have single block then overset different topologies so look at that we have just two bodies and here we have three bodies and pretty much we have similar solutions this blue line kind of is not a good solution which is this one and these are things that you have to be care careful now so here we have the stretching and that stretching is introducing some problems in the interpolation so this is things that you need to know all this standard practice this new way of thinking when generating the image so this is not good but it can be improved okay there is no problem but what is important is by looking this this and this the solution is pretty much similar so by adding that of extrapolation we have some small differences probably the frequency is still this is still the same but it's a little bit shifted now to the right there is another lagging but if you compute average values you will get similar solutions then well here we look at the pretty colors and as you can see pretty much everything will be the same uh then we have flopping, you know, airfalls and stuff like that. I mentioned that you can use any type of mesh. So the previous one was block mesh, it's kind of a structure block mesh. Here we have instructor mesh and there is no problem. So this was generated with the snappy. This was generated with this tool and this measure. So you see that, as you can see, you don't need to use a snappy or block mesh. You can use any tool, just put everything together and merge. Then, okay, since where we come very handy, we have vortex in this vibration. So doing this when using uh, uh, the mesh morphing methodology can be really tricky. So this is where overset meshes becomes very, very handy. And now we go to 3D, pretty much the same. So comparing now the morphing meshes, you merge there here, pretty much the same morphing meshes, but then we do remeshing. But then the most flexible one will be overset meshes. You don't need to do any morphing or you don't need to, 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 to tweak the parameters you now to avoid you now very quite very bad quality cells here you now so this is the most flexible one but you pay a price now it will it will slow down a little bit since and you need to know how to work so here we we compare so i suspected there are some small solution uh, differences and another case more interesting one here same stuff really body motion but now we have multiple bodies as you can see overset meshes can ha handle this with very easily okay but no it's not a big problem doing this one using single block meshes this can be very very tricky so yeah that's all this is more introduction just to remind you that subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so and like the videos you enjoy it so let's move now to to a to a tutorial just to show you a little bit uh the new improvements and the thing that i want to show you here and let me go to the web page so this is the 20 12 22 12 i have to say of this improvement now you have here the releases i have to say that the most interesting one for me is this one in our set matches then you have many improvements in numerics whatever but this one is very good it's very important and basically it's this one this is how you control i'm going to show you what is this issue but this is very important improvement i recommend you to take a look at these pages because there are some other improvement there that are not that important Okay, for me, for overset meshes, this is the most important. And up to today, to the 2312, I think the most important improvement for me is this one in overset meshes because it helps you solve a few issues that you have in, in the open fund implementation. Okay, that being said, let's move to, to a simple tutorial. Okay, so we are here and so I'm running in Windows existing Linux. So it's the same stuff as, as running in Linux and virtual machine. Just to point out that also, if you are using those new hybrid architecture Intel, be careful that you need to run as an administrator. Otherwise it will use efficiency cores. It doesn't matter that it's a subject of another video. So a lot of people having that problem. So here we have the case. We have the single block case that will be our reference case and I will show you some very interesting results. And then we have the overset mesh. Okay, so let's 
work in that oversight just to show briefly show you how things work remember that there is a we're working a new series of video tutorials just to show you everything in details but in any case also you have access now we have we still have online the old video so pretty much is the same it has not changed a lot so here you have this create so let me choose this one is wrong mesh so basically look at that here we're generating the meshes now the component meshes so we have the cylinder and the background okay so this is just the cylinder mesh then the background mesh and look at that what is happening here you need to to choose a folder where where to work work and the order how you merge meshes is very important i'm not going into details but usually the background mesh is the one that is going to take all the other meshes you can have many mesh component meshes so the background will will take everything so it will be the last mesh in the one that you are going to do all the merge operations so see that you generate here you generate the background and the opening that is just a simple tree or block mesh and this is where you merge meshes so at this point you have the meshes um to show you then and this is a critical step when you run check mesh when you do this when check mesh is going to identify regions because you have regions one region one region two or region zero region one so you identify those regions by running check mesh there is another technique using top of it i don't like it it's a little bit confusing so check mesh is this is one and that's all and then you use sex fields to assign the priorities the zones okay so let me open set fields here and basically i know that i have region zero i want to give you zone id zero because i know that this is in my background mesh and remember in open phone the background mesh is always zero it is not compulsory but it's recommended so let's do, do this a step so run mesh and this run mesh what is going to do you now this create automatically is going to generate everything and assign the pro properties and there you go you have everything and let me show you now what is happening when you run check mesh look at that i mentioned that here it's going to tell you okay you have two regions three four five whatever and by the, the order will tell you what are the regions but if you are not sure remember you open part of you and then you can visualize that so i know that this is my background this is my cylinder and that's all then you need to create the overset patches i'm not going to talk a lot about that but that is very important that overset patch okay it is just a single patch it's always the same name you need to give it the same name but it's very important patch it's a critical patch so now to visualize the solution so we go to background the solution now to visualize the mesh we have so far let me go here and as usual there i have the state this one and cell type let me open cell type and um, yeah that one is not going it's this one no. that one i need to compute first the, the cell type so just to show you what is happening here uh but 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 so I skip zero time i don't want to skip this one so zone id okay so basically this is what we this is this is what we have done so far we just created this zone id so basically if you go here you can apply this threshold and let me reduce zone zero the background mesh and this is what you have and then you increase here and this is also important that post-processing our set meshes can be tricky. So usually you do like this, you split the zones and then you select cell types and so on. So be careful about that. This is just a small introduction, but then when in the complete videos, I'm going to show that, but it can be tricky, okay? Uh, post-processing meshes. And this is it. So at this point we have our assembly okay and let's get exploring so now we can move into this folder background background so here is you want to run everything you just go run all and it's going to do everything but i'm going to move here and the next step that i'm going to do okay let me maximize here let me put this one i'm going to compute cell type okay so cell type and let me open here this dictionary so here I have a few dictionaries let me open this one uh it's important it doesn't matter that this is another keyword you have to be careful about this one you need to add this library these are the box switches and that's 
pretty much the same. You have the specific, the solvers specific for overset meshes. They all start by this over, okay, word. And then also another difference is SV schemes. In SV schemes, you need to specify just to give some information about you know, the overset interpolation and so on. So this is where I'm going to talk and to show you an improvement. And then when it comes to SV solution, then you have some other keywords there you know, that you need to add. Uh, pressure also how you discretize pressure is a little bit different and just to mention that usually when you have a single block mesh your pressure equation it is symmetric that matrix here in our set meshes for obvious reasons because you have different patches that the pressure is not anymore a symmetric matrix so this is a big difference no? now you need to use asymmetric solvers and this can be a source of problems of errors though no? this asymmetric ma um, uh, matrices so there are a lot of techniques to to improve that and pretty much we move here and then we go here so in a specific entries related to our set so this one has been removed okay so you can read the release notes so it's worth all options but pretty much is the same besides those uh specific entries for overset meshes another thing that here you go to constant it doesn't matter if you have a moving body or a static body you need to add this dictionary so if you are doing a static body like in this case it's not moving it's just a simple cylinder you need to add this one I mentioned in this is not it's not moving okay so be careful about that is you don't give this one it's going to give you an error uh important poly mesh here i guess you are familiar with this file the boundary look at the overset patch okay so this overset patches is going to contain all the overset interpolation regions okay not necessarily can be one can be many of them everything is contained in this single patch very important or let's say it is recommended that this patch has to be the first one in this list and this can be the last one or it can be somewhere in the middle and so that is something a subject of an advanced video but be careful about that so if you have it here in the top that is a good standard practice if it is a somewhere else it doesn't matter it will work but might give you some problems but good standard practice aim to have this patch there so then when it comes to boundary conditions, basically you have here some ID. So this is just related to the priority knob we created with sec fill. So basically just copy and paste, just a zero grading, and that's all there. Then you have view or whatever fields, and you need to add this patch. Okay, so this is an overset patch, very important. Velocity, you define it like this. And then all the others will be defined like this. Okay, uniform. So look at the keyword. Uniform, okay, overset, so overset patch. And then here you have it. Uniform, a scalar, and then point displacement. It is overset zero grading. Okay, so look at that. Here it follows the standard rules. No vector scalar, so type overset value uniform. But this one, patch type, overset, type, it is a zero gradient, okay, point, point displacement. So even if the body is not moving, you need to define this. So this is part of the methodology that those particular steps of every single solver. So pretty much this is how we do things. And now I want to show you the importance when we go into SV schemes. This is the big improvement I mentioned, the big modification that you have here. This keyword that that will solve a lot of problems. In it, it is not perfect, but it will it will help you a lot. So basically, you don't put anything. I'm not going into detail, but you can look for this information, these keywords in the source code, and you will see what is happening. Okay, I'm not going into detail, but basically you comment that one. It's going to compute that interpolation region using the minimum, let's say, with volume, average volume rate, you know, in the cells. So usually it will be one or two after computing. Then you can comp control that and we're going to see what is happening. So let me use this one default values and just to show you SH run cell type. Okay, so it's going to run just one step. Okay, very important to compute the cell type, you need to run at least one step. Okay, so you can do like the here, you know, one single step. Okay, 
and you don't want to converge anything, just put large value, just want to compute that single iteration. So now that we have, okay, let me go here. I have this state, um, part of it here, cell type, open, and this is what we have. And this is what we did. So look at that. You always remember the walls are going to cut a hole. So this wall, it cut a hole here and then it's starting now from this hole is going to grow it's going to push it away and then somewhere here it's going to interpolate the solution and just to show you that interpolation let me go here so red means it's a hole and then the gray it is the interpolation region so this is a valid mesh for but as you can see this interpolation region is too close and that can give you problems and just coming back i don't have this size there, let me see where I put those says. Okay, I don't have it there, but in any case, okay, let me go part of you, PowerPoint, and it was, I think it was this. Yeah, so basically, this is the stat that it was mentioned that this is valid, but it's too close. Okay, so the ideally, you want to put it a little bit far from the wall. So this is the optimization step. And this is what was missing in OpenFone until this big update that for me is the most important one in overall. Okay. It's not only for, for our set in overall. Okay. Because when I do use our set, this is very important. So this is what is happening. Then also you have the other, this one is the, is the cylinder and see that the cylinder is very simple, calculate it and then here interpolate, but then the other is taking everything and here is what is happening. So this will be a hole. No, you are not going to compute the solution, interpolate here. And as you can see, also there is kind of an exchange of information here between all the component meshes. So you're going to patch the solution, pass the solution from one to the other and so on. Okay, so this is what is happening. So now that we have seen that patch, let's do something. And it's your chance here. So let me tell you. So if you don't put anything, it will be at a, a default computation. I mentioned that you can look that and you can look for that in the source code to get an idea of what is happening. And I go into details, but usually it will be something like this, that default computation, whole layers four, use layer one, or maybe two. Now we're going to talk about what are these options. So let me go here, eight. And this is very important because you need to know what is happening. And let me increase about this, what is happening, but also you need to know your mesh. So let me run again, one step, whoop, let me redo it. And now let me launch part of you. So I'm just interested in launching, in computing that, that, that interpolation fringe. So part of you go here. And now clearly you can see that it's much different. Okay, so you see that now you're getting further, further away with from the wall. And this is a much better solution. So ideally you will you would like to get something like this. And I have to mention that this is part of the implementation. Different solvers, they have different implementations. So my personal experience, the best implementation is something like this. I have to show, you know, comparing with ANSYS or with Overture and other nice. Uh, open source tool to just, you can get an idea of what is happening, but it's optimizing that interpolation region. And this is what is happening. Okay. This is what you control there. So it is extremely recommended to use a value larger than one or two here. So since that you have to be careful, use layer needs to be lower than this one. And what is whole layer, whole layers, it is, you are going to mask or to tag the cells from the wall. Okay, how many cells you, you do you want to grow? So in this case, I'm telling grow eight cells, but not in the cylinder. So the cylinder is cutting, and let me go here. Let me open this one. And this is what is happening. And uh, let me put also this. So the cylinder is cutting a hole in the background or whatever they have below. So priority is important, which doesn't work very well in open for any case. Uh, so it will cut this one and then from this intersection will tag those cells using whatever algorithm uh, method. And then it's going to move eight cells here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
until somewhere here, all these cells you are going to keep in memory. And it doesn't matter if you put a hundred cells that are outside this one, I don't know, beyond the interpolation re region. It doesn't matter. However, it doesn't matter because it, it is not used. However, the larger this value is, the slower the computation will be because this is information that you are going to have in memory, you're going to show you the that benchmarking. Okay. So usually you know your mesh, you get this idea, and you know kind of how many cells you have, you know how how is this overlap together. So in this case, a value of eight. It is enough, okay? It is almost in the limit of the overset of the overset patch. And then the other, so that was whole layers. Then use layers. How many layers do you want to go you now away from the wall? Okay, from where you are cutting that hole. So you have here, but those layers is not in the cylinder. Okay, and let me highlight it in the cylinder mesh. It is in the background mesh. Okay, or in the mesh that you are cutting a hole. Okay, so if you have multiple meshes, in each of those meshes that you are cutting the hole, you are going to push away. So look at here that I chose a values four. Okay, and you see here one, two, three, four. You have there in four your interpolation layer. And if you look at your output here, also you have that information. So you have a way of knowing that. And this is what I mentioned, average volumetric rate is the information used. If you don't put anything, uh, the implementation is going to use a, an, an algorithm there, a method, and it's according to that, it's going to, to choose the minimum, the minimum interpolation region. Okay, so this is what is happening. Now let me show you if I go six, okay, and I go for six there, And now let's visualize the solution. So I hope you have a good memory, a photographic memory, or how Homer say a phonographic memory. And I go here and there you go. And clearly you can see it's a larger region. So this is the concept. So you want to minimize, you no, know, you want to put away this interpolation region from the walls and minimize this region. Okay. There are some standard practices also that you should have a minimum layer. So usually it will be three or four. So here we're in that optimal situation. So there are many standard practices that say there is a completely new way of thinking when generating our set meshes. So let me close here and you can play with this parameter. Okay. So try to use different meshes now, because this is this typical cylinder case that kind of a uh, oversimplification of what can be uh, a complicated geometry, but try to use something else and get familiar. Okay. Remember you are the one doing the mesh. So you know, how will be you now this interpolation region, the, all the hole in layers do not use here. If I put here and to show you, I can put 80. Okay. And it's going to work, but the problem is that you are going to get all that information in memory and see that how slow it was because you are putting everything in memory and you're going to track that information, but it's going to work with no problem. And let me show you. So you should use exactly the minimum information of what you need. Okay. Do not go and put a crazy high value or you put the crazy high value if you have no idea what is happening, but that's not the goal. And there you go. You see that it's working, but what happened is that you put 80. So now it's keeping in memory a lot of information that really you don't need. Okay. So here I have another interesting result that I want to show you. So here I compute a priori, you know, I have those fringe. So this is the default auction. I commented the, 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 the auction in SB skin. This one is commented. Uh, let me go. So probably in this case, this will be the best one. It's like this. So automatically open is computing this one and it is kind of one layer you can see you have the hole here and kind of here you are going to have the other cells so it will be one use layer one and if i will recall the hole in layer the default value i think is four but doesn't matter then i change it so now i go from the default one and see that this is i force now one layer so here i can see that okay the default value it is one layer However, it's not always the case that depends on the mesh in the uh, aspect ratio and the growth rate and so on, but usually it's between one and two. Okay. So now look at happened. Now I have two use layers. So now I'm going further away. 
two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so this is idea. So this is this is I would say is the ideal one. Seven it still is a good one, but look at that now it's getting closer to the other patch. So that might give you interpolation problems. So here we can start to talk about explicit implicit interpolations and so on. So that is the subject of a more advanced video. And look at here that this is not ideal. I have eight layers. So now this is touching there. So that is going to give you problems. And then nine layers, and this is all orphan cells. So look at that. Now these cells, they don't have any other donor cell from where. So if we talk about donors and receptors. So there are no donor cells, so it's going to give you problems. It can run. It's going to introduce some artifacts there, or it might diverge. In this case, it diverged. And then when I use 10, that is completely outside there, it is not computing your interpolation. So, so this is the idea of that new keyword that, as I say, my opinion is the biggest improvement in overall in the open, open phone uh, com. So this is it. And at this point, let's run this case. So as you said, I will run real time this simulation, but so just to show you what's happening and so on. And just to show you also have all the cases. So look at that talking about you are paying a big, big price for using our set measure. So here you have the single grid. Okay. This is the standard case. Okay. I'm not using overset meshes. I look at it, it takes 60 seconds, one minute for one second uh, is 100 iteration. So everything is fixed. So it is not this case. Uh, let me show you what would be that case. But, 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 so I do all my benchmarking using the same tolerances and linear solver and so on. So this case, it always, ah, uh, yeah. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Always run 100 seconds, same times and so on in order, in order to, to be able to do a, a good benchmarking. But what is interesting here that single grid one minute and look at that when the minute that you introduce over set meshes, basically you're multiplying by 10 this time, it's 10 times slower. It's not open from every single solver because now you have extra information. Maybe Fluent it tends to be a little bit faster, but it's not like it will be order of magnitude. It's about the same. Okay. And it starts to see, and I have the opportunity to use it and so on. So you are adding this extra overhead. And this is why it's not recommended now to use over some meshes is the bodies are not moving because you're paying a, a large cost, but what is interesting that the solution is pretty much the same. Okay. But it will change. So here case zero is the default like this, but then case one, four, one, then case two, two use layer. So all that progression that I show you in the figures are increasing. And look at that by increasing that there is a slight difference in your coefficient, CD, CL, and so on. Okay. So you have to be careful about that. It is not only open phone, it is every single piece of CFD is over obvious reason. There is some interpolation there, some conservation and so on. But personally speaking, I think in open phone it tends to be a little bit large. You now this difference is like compared with some other like fluent is much, much less. So I'm not worried about that here. Maybe when I use six, I start to get a little bit worried because I realize that it tends to be so some difference are about 5% with the reference value. Also, there is no way to say that this is your, your ground truth, but it was my, my reference, but you can measure there that there is some reference. Also look at, at the computing time. When I increase this hole in layers, my computing time, it is increasing. So look at that from eight, I go to from 10 and it seems, seems to be something small, but when you have 3d cases, this will be large. And as I mentioned, this is just due to the fact that you are keeping more information in memory. Look at now you go to 12 and it is something noticeable. And here you go and put one just playing 20 and look at that by 600 almost you increase that computing time okay so do not go here and put a large value you know your mesh try to get the best value so the you you get your 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 mesh that it will be almost almost in the same area where you have the interpolation region okay so this is a nice benchmark and you have it there and also to show you as well that a comparison. Dun, 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 dun. Let me let me go. Okay, let me 
go here, bam, 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 over set. And let me launch new plot. And just to show you that I also have my I pre-compute the solution and I have a few solutions there. And let's take a look here. So I have different cases, no or different overset meshes, now with different no use letter options and then the single block. So let's take a look first. This is the drag coefficient. And uh, yeah, yeah, ta, 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 ta. I have to go here. Okay. Base. And there you go. So what we have here, all the cases, as I mentioned, there are some slight differences. So look at that. This one, 12, 8 is the one that the interpolation fringe is. Okay, and let's go to the figure here, background fix, it will be this one. So it's this case, it's too close. Here you have this, it's too close to this interpolation. The hole is too close to this interpolation and that is going to add a lot of conservation error. So you have it there. So you are highly under, underestimated in this case is CL. But then the other coefficients pretty much they are good. So let me hide this one, which is the the ugliest one, but then the others are quite, quite good. And let me hide here, here, here. These two, the single block and the one twelve six. It is pretty much the same average value. Remember, as we have this different structure, it's going to lack a little bit. You no, know, the frequency pretty much, it, the frequency is the same, but it's shifted in this case a little bit to the right. You no, know, the, the overset one, but the frequency is exactly the same. And let me check this one. Okay, so, pa, 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 four. So I want to see this too. Let me hide this one. So six. Okay, let me go here. Eight. Pretty much the same. And four. So the one with four. Okay, look at that. It tends to be a little bit higher, the mean value. And here you can get an idea what is happening with four is that maybe it was too close. Okay, it was too close to the wall, so that gradient somehow it was influencing your solution. So the minute that we went to six, we reduced that. Okay, so that is the importance about that value and to choose that the right value. Previous version of OpenFund that didn't exist. Everything was done like this, and that was a big problem. Okay. Still, you might say, okay, this is a small difference and so on. It might be true, but also if you think about uh, computational efficiency, because this is 2D, but as you go to 3D in this hole, you can have a lot of cells. So that will slow down your computation. Okay, so this is for CD. And if we look for CL, pretty much it would be the same story. So let me go here. Let me put it there. And there you go. So quite nice results. Everything is okay, just to show you. So at this point, let me go and run the simulation. So you have this script there, and let me show you. So I will stay quiet for a while. What is important is that remember that what is happening here is that it's much, much slower. So look at that. We're immediately multiplying almost by a factor of 15 something from 10 to 15, your computing time. So now I send it here to Q, ta, 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 ta. let me go here, let me close this. And okay, yeah, SH run solver, and there you go. So it's running in parallel, by the way, be careful, it's running in parallel with four cores, so you need to have th those four cores uh, available, and pretty much this is it. So while it's running, uh, you will notice that you get this information here, okay? So this is the interpolation, the overset interpolation. And in this case, it's always the same because the body is not moving, but when the body is moving, this is computed in each each time step. Uh, remember what we will talk about uh, SB schemes that there are this new entry. So pretty much all this is the same. Now you have overset interpolation and you have this entry. So you have different interpolation methods. Personally speaking, I prefer the least square for this case. I use inverse distance, but doesn't matter. It's up to you. And then this new entry, which is the one that change everything so this one make, make makes overset meshes more efficient in open phone then you have these extra ones that later we talk about that these auctions on a more advanced video 
Uh, then when it comes to SV solution, pretty much the same, uh, but you are going to have some specific entries uh, related to our set meshes. These entries, they don't exist anymore. Now you have this one to reduce the conservation errors. And I have to be also to stress something that the interpolation, and let me open the figure because I think there is a misconception that people think that this interpolation is conservative or some people claim that they are doing something to make it a conservative. That interpolation is not conservative. Clearly, you can see here that there are some errors. All for obvious reasons, you have very fine meshes and you're trying to get the same volume or area of the cells. You can get something very good, but it's not conservative. So there are some methods that they claim that they make it conservative, but there are some techniques just to reduce the error. So numerical tricks, but it is a non-conservative interpolation. At least in 2D and 3D, it is non-conservative. In 1D, there are some papers very interested that they claim they have it and actually they do it, but it's 1D. We don't live in a one-dimensional world, so we need to, to live with the conserv non-conservative interpolation, which is not a problem. And to mention about that here, you have now they talk about these keywords and some other things that they eliminated. So everything I mentioned, you have it there. Okay, so this is, remember, the 20 to 12. And probably, yeah, I did this video a little bit late, but yeah, I was doing a lot of benchmarking, testing, a lot of things, and adding my own improvement as well. So at this point, I will stay quiet you now, and I will let it run. Okay, so as you can guess, it will take about a thousand seconds. So let's see what happens. Okay, so we're back. So as you see, it's much slower in this case of 1500 seconds. Okay, it's about tenfold factor, the simulation. And just to show you, well, let me run the same case, but the single block, just to be sure that I'm not doing any black magic. Look at how fast it is. So this is about one minute. So while I, we finish about this. So remember, it's about tenfold uh, this low down. So you're adding this extra overhead of the computation. And also remember, it's a completely new way of thinking, generating uh, overset meshes. So it's not just generating component meshes and then put it together. So I just show you that this is important to use layer auction. That is something that should be done automatically and open from it still needs to be done manually and since get trickier you have more than one component mesh or let's say three four five meshes since can get tricky and post-processing it is different so as soon as we finish this here i'm going to show you the post-processing that you have to be careful about a few new things that were adding there know how to process so let, let me do it here Background, I already have the solution here. Already. Now let me go put a phone and let me launch. So if I will recall, I have here low state and here I have this one and it should, we should be able to open. Okay, there you go. So let me explain you this step. And there you go, here we have the solution. So about 75 seconds, okay. It's a little bit slower than the other benchmarking. Remember, I'm just recording that takes resources and I'm doing some other stuff on, on the background. But yeah, those those are the times. So to show you here how to do the post process, and let me show you here the workflow. So when you open, you read your mesh, you have everything. And this is important when you read, you're going to have everything there in a single mesh. Okay, so look at that here. There should be a hole, you see something, but this is just due to the fact now there's still here, you're interpolating, no sense computer. So this is what we have. So you need to extract different blocks. So see that we have this threshold. In this threshold, I am extracting block zero, and then you have this threshold here and extracting the other block, block two or block one, now where I have the mesh around the cylinder. So this is the thing that you have to be careful now when post-processing. In this case, that is 2D, 
and you will see that when you visualize here, maybe you are going to see some strange visualization artifact. That is be because now part of you doesn't know which mesh to give preference and all to what visualization. So basically what I do when I'm doing to uh, to the cases, I go here and I transform and I shift it by one. See here. Okay. It was already shifted actually. So that I put it there and there you go. And let me put it normal here. So you have there and uh, let me bam, 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 bam. It will be this one. Uh, let me make it today. There you go. So basically let me choose velocity and there you go. Okay. So as you put it, sometimes you put it in zero, look at this, some different there. So if you're having some, those artifacts, you just shift it a little bit in front and you have it. So this is what you do. Then how do you remove the cell type? So if I go here, you're going to have the cell types. So this is what happened, whole interpolation. Okay. So to remove the cell types, basically you add another threshold, which is this one here. And basically you select there what you want to see. So two, it is the whole. Okay. So you don't want to see two here. Let me go here. You see two, it is the whole. And if I were recall, three will be the orphan cell. So basically now I remove the whole. Okay. And the same here you remove and there you go. You have your overset mesh there, and this is how you post process. The more you have there, the, the tricky you will get. So, so be careful about that. It can be really tricky. It's not only open phone, it's any software. So now, for instance, in Fluent, they added a, an option to do this stuff automatically that you can automatize also in your own. So there is no problem. So just have in mind that can be a little bit tricky. So this is it. This is how overset meshes works. Uh, this is the now date now for, uh, since the last tutorial, I think it was like six years ago, the last overset uh, video tutorial. And it was that old because they didn't add the developers didn't add any big improvement until this one. So now after revisiting this one and doing a lot of validation, I think, and in a stage that I can do this, 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 this new video tutorials, but yeah, I hope you found now uh, this, this introduction there to overset meshes and this update to overset meshes, uh, useful. And I hope to, to see you in the next series of videos dedicated to overset meshes where we're going to talk about now more details, the theory in open phone, but also, and also in fluent and we're going to do some comparison. So thanks for your support and hope to see you next time. Bye.